Let's go again with more YouTube comments on Google Plus now. This is video 11 of the series. More likely it's going to keep going on. Now like three comments back to back by Margus CT on my Angry German Kid Watches Rock Mono video. Which pretty much used that guy poops. YouTube poop. Spongebob goes into a horrifying dimension. Which is, yeah, Rock Mono was not a real Spongebob episode, nor was it ever an episode in the Creepypasta. It was YouTube poop that, by that guy poops. Wow, Plankton made me scared. I can't get out of my head! Plankton, get out of there! Please! By the way. And then he said, Jake sent Leopold the cartoon? I hope Jake will get his ass kicked. As in, Jake Randolph. Leopold's friend in an AG in the AGK in some AGK series like Angry German Kid 82s and I think he also was in Cool Ones series. <laughs> really wish those guys would come back. Evil Guy 19 on episode 11 of Blind Devil's Trip Back in Time saying, "This hack was definitely a neat one. I had fun playing it myself, but the no mid points dragged it down some. It made the levels drag on and on. No kidding." <laughs> Hailstorm commenting on episode three of. C3 Let's Play Supreme. Obviously, probably Lunar Legends, because, yeah. <laughs> Talking about how, at 33 seconds, it's the blimp theme from Donkey Kong Land that... I didn't know at the time. Kurito Kazuto. On Panic in the Mushroom Kingdom 2 World 1. The second Panic in the Mushroom Kingdom hack. Lol, Yoshi had a bong. <laughs> Wait, I said that in the video somewhere? Because I don't remember. Also, why didn't you burn the Porky Puffer? I probably didn't because I want the level to be harder. <laughs> Patty C commenting on episode 15 of when I played Luigi's Adventure 3 Overseas Edition. When I was playing the Valley Fortress. <laughs> you know, the one that was like labyrinth-like. You had to do the get out through the right doors or you'd be stuck in a loop. You'd be stuck in limbo. I still can't do this level! How did you get to the new room at 13 minutes 30 seconds? I've tried everything I can think of, including the first three rooms over and over, and several times and still nothing. It's really pissing me off. Well, I don't know if you lost an escape key out of the rage, or one flew out of your keyboard. <laughs> still, I can't believe I turned into Leopold Slick for a second there. Super Derulo World, more than obviously, Julien Z57. Super Derulo World. Hi, instead of trying to criticize you a hack, here's a video on safe states to show you that the hack is doable without safe states. This being oh, Super Derulo World 4. At the time, I still wasn't over the shock of it. I knew the hack was still playable. A more a majority of people do not appreciate having to exploit glitches just to play the hack, especially very tricky ones like X and Y. You were aware that it wasn't entirely obvious to everyone first time around, so good job on explaining it, plus giving them more than one chance to get it right. The fact that you did it without safe states is very impressive. Graphics-wise, they were in flaws too, but I mostly criticized the screwy and un unbalanced difficulty. I was pretty relieved to know this guy spoke English, so I didn't have to speak in French. It's harder than speaking English, trust me, I would know. Then 10 pound hammer commenting on just another SMW hack. Yes, he is the author of this hack. Funniest thing is, this guy said that he was looking for beta testers for his hack a whole year ago. I was uh, fashionably late to his request. <laughs> didn't realize you let's play this. The first piece which in the palace that fills the first room of coins. Also, there are tons of paths you didn't explore, but I get that your intent was just to give a general run through of the hack. <laughs> yeah, this was the guy who had several paths in the hack, and I guess all of them do somehow lead to the goalpost in the end, which is pretty neat. Something that most people just don't do in their hacks. Jonathan Vargas on Angry German Kid Watches Rock Motto again. Best creepypasta ever. Oh, and I think this was Metal Sonic that left the first comment, and I replied to it on my other video called Level Engine vs. Advertisements, also known as What the Fuck League of Angels. You know, that League of Angels ad that I later figured out that was act that was actually supposed to be it was actually stolen from a fan made video of Toho by some guy, some Japanese guy. Made a fan video of Toho with Rani Yukari dancing around in bikinis, and League of Angels stole like the last twenty, thirty seconds of it and used it as an animation for well, 
one of their ads. Despite the fact that Rand and Yukari are not angels. Get your shit together. Oh, Strike Forcer started it. You know, I never like advertisement physics because the product does not promise the fan service. You know what I mean? If you Yeah. Rand and Yukari are not gonna be in League of Angels. Oh, but I didn't disappoint any of you by telling you this. It's not just fan service, it's false advertising, and the people that made this ad can get in a lot of trouble because of it. I don't even know what'll happen if you click the ad. Don't want to find out, I'm not on drugs. And regardless of whether this was made by League of Angels themselves or some hacker slash troll, I always thought that I had to be on drugs to see this. <laughs> Marcus Julian on the same video, SFU. This guy posted a lot of random comments on a bunch of my videos and on my channel and I never quite could understand what he was trying to say. Yet another case of a language barrier I can't seem to break. <laughs> Trademarks on Rockmato again. Rockmato is actually a YouTube poop, I think. It is! I wrote that in the description, plus who actually made it and the link to the original video, because, yeah. You gotta give credit where credit's due. Strike Forcer on episode 1 of When I Played Super Mario Returns by KT, not to be confused with KC. KT's hack is about as old as Luigi's Adventure. KT's level design resembles Anakitis because they were friends back when Akamlum's board was the main niche for Super Mario World hacking. This was probably back at about 2003 before SNW Central was even created by Kieran and such. This Korean guy on episode 5 of... No, no, episode 25 of the very first Luigi's Adventure OSC. Lakitu is so funny! Some Korean guy who probably isn't draw cause because the English is actually alright. Strike Force on episode 3 of, well... KT's hack. I lean more towards Anakiti being inspired by KT's level design, although I still hold that both hackers inspire each other. Horikawa Otane commenting on episode 4 of SNWW Returns. Not to comment on the video itself, but to tell me that I had, she sent me a message in the, on the talk house. This is Horikawa Otane from the talk house. I contacted you there regarding your Magal X level. Please respond. I did. <laughs> this is the time I submitted a half joke to the Magal X. I built a nice, beautiful ocean level that didn't have anything wrong with it, except for one thing. The music. I recorded it straight off of Malcolm Bellman 38's tech support de versus WWSPA and put it in as a joke. And it placed poorly in the contest because of that. Raukau saying, this is what future levels may look like when one aspect of it doesn't corrupt it so badly that you can't even think about the level anymore. <laughs> WWE Mario on when I played Dipolons 2 saying Kaizo hacks are now allowed at Super Mario Central. Thank you sir, but I was aware of that. Oh, also another guy commenting on the League of Angels thing I bashed. You don't buy League of Angels, it's free. They probably have microtransactions much like League of Legends. Oh, maybe. This guy plays League of Angels, called it. Who flung do on, yeah. Part 9 of Level Design Contest 2013, Chocolate. Should have read the readme. If there were no new lines, you could have opened it in a word pad or something. You missed a huge part of the game, namely one more special attack from Mario. Three different special attacks from Luigi, and finally if you press select, you could use mushrooms slash firepowers that you'd find from your inventory to heal and give yourself firepower shard. Wow. That patch had a lot. Hooflung Du and TLMB really did a whole lot together. Camo Dude on the infamous, my infamous Gravel Door video. Wasting my time. P face. And I'm commenting on my own Let's Play of Super Mario Ultimatum. Now I'm currently in the process of searching through this hack to reevaluate it. So far, I discovered Yoshi's Island 1 that also message that says, No, please stop. I was like, stop what? Then someone else also managed to open the hack and find the message, Transmission begins at 325 2014. 
I'm curious about the date and whatever other messages could be in this hack now. If someone knows how to open the Great Cave Trek, tell me as soon as possible. And here we have some really funny comments on my video where I was playing PETA's Pokemon Red, White, and Blue. There, that really shitty parody that made us all laugh. Originally, I had nothing to do with McDonald's, and the final boss was Ash. Because, yeah, you gotta bash McDonald's if you're PETA. You just can't go wrong with that. Why not bash KFC? Apparently, more chickens die, like, a year, like, a billion or whatever. I don't know what the numbers are. And then Soul also was like, original post was on wrong account. Usually, when I see PETA, I start craving meat. In fact, I'm eating meat right now. In fact, this is McDonald's. <laughs> And yeah, pretend I said this, I was on the wrong profile, same thing. If you really want to piss off PETA, this is the way to go. Good job, my man. Moody X commenting on Collab, the collab by Nee Dave and Friends, ep on episode 2 of that collab. The levels look horribly goddamn cramped, holy shit. Same guy also commenting on when I played you. That joke hack made in an hour at 1 in the morning by Mario and Luigi. 10 on 10. <laughs> and then I, after that, I made a video wondering what I should do if I should partner with zoomin.tv. Because I actually got a message in my inbox that said zoomin.tv wants to actually promote your channel. I was really interested at the time, and I thought that this could have really given me a huge boost in subscribers, except they sent me a link to something on the dashboard, except I could never find it, and when I told them that I couldn't find it, they said the same thing that they said before. I wouldn't go with ZoomIn.TV, because they're not a very well-known network. Now I have two great partnerships, one which I am partner with. Full Screen is the largest network on YouTube for any type of videos. They have no requirements. What they do is review your channel, and they see from there. They have the number one subscriber rank in all of YouTube. 3 plus billion views monthly for every partner channel combined, and 200 million subs combined for all their subs also. If you want to apply, click here. Reference from, well, this guy. Akifin's another one. <laughs> Means better response time. Overall, I would choose full screen. But here's ultimately why I didn't even bother with zoomin.tv anymore. A terraformer claims to have been partnered with them. At first, I was actually nervous that some random bot would somehow get involved, start jacking up my views illegitimately, and I'd be punished with no way to protect my ass. YouTube would just not care, and my channel would completely fall apart, and all the years I spent making videos, despite the fact that I just had to sit there and talk into a microphone while playing a game, would be gone. <laughs> I never gave it much thought, actually. I used AdSense for a little before that for the hell of it, and it didn't even seem like much of a change. I guess I get more money from it, though I could get more if I actually allowed videos to play before mine, which I never will. Yeah, like, he doesn't support using ads, so yeah. I don't know, I did buy Ape Escape with it, so there should be more reason to be at LP it, haha. As far as views go, I never saw a difference. I highly doubt they'd use some random bot to check up views so, the, so they could give you more money. Doesn't make sense financially, there really is a negative to it. Literally, the worst thing that could happen is that they go out of business, and nothing changes. A terraformer had about the same amount of subscribers as me back when I was playing Luigi's Adventure Overseas Edition and was complimenting me. Now he's got like almost triple the amount that I have. Except he didn't gain them from Zoom In or anything like that. Rockhouse simply noticed him. He liked them. He told people to check out his channel. Other people did, and boom, more subs. It's called the Colbert Bump. 